This is just one of those drop everything and make kind of patterns. Wow. Hello and welcome to Just Vintage Crochet. And today we have this stunning fan doily from either the 1970s or the 1980s. If any of you have seen this before or are familiar with this pattern, please let me know where it came from, who made it so that I can properly give credit. Um, but it's beautiful. When I saw it, I was already working on another doily that you guys are going to see, and I stopped working on that one just to make this one. Oh, I have to have this in my life. So let's see what we need. I already have all the materials. I already obviously looked over this thing. So I don't know what's hidden under here. That's from where I got the pattern. But it says that we need 50 yards of white number 10 cotton and then seven yards of size 30 cotton for seed beads i have little pearl little plastic pearls that i'm going to use and some red sewing thread mm, i don't have any number 20 in red so here is what i'm going to do since i have an abundance of number 10 in white i've got this jumbo like 1000 yard ball in uh, natural and that's what I'm going to use for the fan. I have an abundance of number 20 in white, which tells me that I need to diversify my size 20 thread, apparently, in color. So it's going to be this natural sort of wheat color with white flowers. And I'm going to use the white pearls. And this is number 20. There you go. So that is how mine is going to be worked out. I am going to use a number one, I'm sorry, a 1.5 millimeter modern number two for the body of the fan or for the fan itself. It says to use a number 10 steel hook. That's basically going to be a 1.5 millimeter. And it doesn't really say what number hook to use for the, for the flowers. Um, but because I want them to be smaller, I think I'm going to go with a 0 0.9 millimeter. If that's too small, I'm going to bump it up to a 1.25 millimeter. But I'll let you know in the pattern if that's what I'm going to do, like as we're working. So let's get right into this one here. And of course, you will be able to find this pattern and a link to the pattern in the description box down below. So let's grab the white or whichever color, number 10 thread you're going to use, and I have to figure out where my end is. Just a moment. Literally right whenever I hit stop, I found it. <laughs> okay, so I like to leave a nice long tail for nice secure weave-ins. And it says that we are to chain four and slip stitch to form a ring. I am going to use a magic circle, but I will start this off for those who don't use a magic circle. You're going to chain four and then just join into your first chain with a slip stitch to form a ring. I find that to be a bit suffocating to try to work into. And if you also find that to be a bit suffocating and don't want to use the magic ring, then chain five or six. It'll be fine because the part that we're working on right now is going to be hidden by a pretty little flower. So no one's going to see it. So you do what you need to do to make it work for you. But I am going to go with a magic circle. Again, nice long tail. And there we go. I'm gonna chain one to secure it. Tighten it up just a little bit. And it wants us to work a chain three. And that's gonna count as our first double crochet. And we're going to work 17 more for a total of 18 double crochet into the ring. There we go. That's two, three, four, and five. And I will be right back whenever I have a total of 18 counting my starting chain three. Okay, so I now have my 18 single or double crochet. And I'm just going to slip stitch into the top of the starting chain three. Then I will pull on everything to tighten it up because again, it don't matter. No one's going to see this part anyway. So now it wants us to chain five, 
one, two, three, four, five. And then into the very next stitch over, work a double crochet, chain two. So that chain five counts as our first double crochet plus chain two. Now, chain two and into the very next stitch over, we're not skipping any stitches. We are intended to have 18 double crochet and 18 spaces in between them all the way around. Chain two, next stitch over. So this is the repeat and I will be right back when we get back around to the beginning. Okay, so let's go ahead and chain two after you've worked your last double crochet and join into the third chain up. One, two, three, with a slip stitch. Now it wants us to slip stitch over into the chain two space and we're going to chain three for a double crochet we're going to work what they're calling a shell, which is two double crochet, chain two, and two double crochet. I used to just call that a double V-stitch. <laughs> so we have our starting chain three. Let's work another double crochet right next to it. Chain two, and into that same space, two more double crochet. Now I get it, that probably is a shell. Like traditionally that's a shell, but for me, I always used to just call that a double V-stitch because that's what it looks like. Okay. In the next space, we're going to work a single crochet, chain two, and single crochet. And then into the next space after that, we're going to work a shell or a double V stitch in my mind. <laughs> so two double crochet, chain two, and two double crochet. And this will be the repeat all the way around where you're going to work this shell and then right next to it you're going to work the single crochet chain two single crochet all into the same space let me see if i can make that look a little bit better there we go and then you just yarn over and into the next space work the shell so that's the repeat into every single space all the way around. Chain two, and then two more doubles. So I will be right back, but this is what you should have. Your shell, then your single, chain two, single, shell, single, chain two, single, okay? Okay, so let's end the round. I just worked my last shell, and we started off with the shell, so your last space should have the single crochet, chain two, single crochet. Single, chain two, and single. And it says to end as the round before, so we're just gonna slip stitch into the third chain up. One, two, three, just like that. There we go. So that is how everything is looking a little. So it says that we're going to begin working in rows now. So now we're gonna to begin to form the shape of our fan. So it says to chain three, it says shell in chain space of first shell. So we're just gonna jump right over then. Okay. One, two, two chains and then one and two. So now we chain three, two, three, and we're just going to work another shell. One, two. Now it says to do that four times and, oh, no, chain three, and then work a shell in the shell. One, two, chain two, one, two, chain three, and then one, two, double crochet, chain two, and one, two, oops, chain three, that's how many, one, two, three, four, we need to leave one, two, three, four, so I got to do this one more time. One more shell, one, two. Oh, Karina, calm down, girl. 
chain two, one, two, and this. So we have one, two, three, four, five shells worked and one, two, three, four unworked. Now we're going to start on row five. So chain, oh, no, 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 I'm a big fat liar. So without chaining, this is how we end this round of our shell stitches here from the previous round. So down here, you can see your four double crochet. Well, the last double crochet of the shell, go ahead and work another double crochet right into the top of it, just like that. Just like how we started. Okay, now onto row five. We're gonna chain three, one, two, three. And we're going to work a shell in the shell. So that's, again, two double crochet, chain two, and two double crochet. I can do that one better. There we go. One, two. Okay, now into the chain three space, we're gonna work a single crochet. I'm sorry, chain two first. I'm so sorry. I'm reading this while working. So I am literally reading this pattern for the very first time while working it. So work a single crochet, chain three, and then a single crochet. Then chain two and work a shell in the shell. So that's the repeat all the way to the end of this row. When you get to the end, come on back. And then two double crochet. I'll work that one more time with you. Chain two and into the chain three space, we work our single crochet, chain three, single crochet, chain two, shell in the shell. So now I will be right back. So here is how everything should be looking right now. So let's end this row. Oops. <laughs> Anyways, without chaining, go ahead and work a double crochet into the top of our turning chain three, just like that. Then chain three again and turn, work a shell in the shell, chain two, two doubles. Okay. Now, without chaining, into our little chain three loops down here, work eight double crochet. Just eight straight double crochet in a row. One, two, three, four. Let's do that again. That's four, five, Six, don't know why I keep doing that. Seven, gets a little tight. And then eight. And then again, without chaining, yarn over and, and into the shell, work a shell. There we go. Two doubles, chain two and two doubles. and then repeat without chaining. Just yarn over and into the little loop, the little chain three loop, work your eight double crochet. So this is the repeat all the way to the end. Come on back whenever you have worked your last shell and we will end this row together, but this is how everything should be looking right now. Shells, chain eights, shells, no chains in between the shells and the, I said chain eights and I meant to say eight double crochet. See if I can straighten that out a little bit. There we go. There you go. I'll be right back. I already love this and want to personally thank the designer with the handshake. I love this already. I love this already. Okay. Here we go. We're going to end the same way we've been ending. So into the top, into the top, I said into the, into the top of our starting chain three, we work a double crochet. Oh, I do. I really do just love this already. I really want to know who wrote this. Where did this come from? I would love to know. Okay. 
Now for row seven, we're gonna start the same way. Chain three, turn and work a shell in the shell. Two double crochet, chain two, two double crochet. And then into our eight double crochet, we're going to yarn over without chaining anything at all and work a double crochet, chain one, double crochet into the next double crochet, chain one. So we're not gonna skip any of these eight double crochet. We're gonna work one double crochet, followed by a chain one over all of them. Chain one. So I guess this is the birth of a pineapple. I guess technically the eight double crochet were the birth of a pineapple. But now it's gonna start to be more evident that that's what we are working on. I do like this pattern. I'm excited about this one. Okay, and then without chaining again, we work a shell into the shell. So this is the repeat all the way to the end. And you're gonna end by working a double crochet into the top of your turning chain. So go ahead and finish working this stitch pattern. Let me go ahead and finish this shell, I suppose. Chain two and then two doubles. One and two, okay? So this is the stitch pattern repeat all the way to the end. Again, you're gonna end with a double crochet into the top of your turning chain. I'll be right back. Okay, so I ended with my shell and then my double crochet into the top of my turning chain. Now we're gonna chain three and work a shell in the shell. So chain three, turn, work a shell in the shell. Two double crochet, chain two, two double crochet. Now it says we are going to, this is gonna be the repeat, chain three, single crochet into the next chain one space. So right here, oops, is that, yeah, single crochet, yes. Okay, then we're going to, oh, do that seven times. Chain three and single crochet into the next chain one space. Chain three, single crochet. And I would imagine that when we're done, because it says that this is the repeat, we're gonna chain three and work a shell in the shell. So let me just look really quick. Yeah, chain three, shell in the shell, repeat across. And with a double crochet into the top of your turning chain. One, two, three. two, three, chain three, and work a shell in the shell. I really wish this would quit twisting because <laughs> it likes to gather right under my fingers because this is how this is what it's doing. It'll gather up and ball up right there to where I can't, I can't let it flow through anymore. Getting a little annoying. Just a little annoying. Okay, so that is what our pattern repeat will look like. So we do have one, two, three, four, five, six loops, and that's because this is going to slowly reduce down into the shape of a pineapple. So this, this should be less. That is the way it's meant to be. So now we're gonna chain three and repeat into the first chain one space. See what it does? See what it's doing? That's annoying. <laughs> one, two, three. There we go. So I'm gonna repeat this all the way to the end and then end this row with a double crochet into the top of the turning chain right here on the side. Okay, now let's move on to row nine and we're going to work some increases. 
So let's start off with our chain three. Work a shell in the shell, but actually we're going to work a double shell in this shell. We're gonna work a double shell in all of our shells across. Oops, <laughs> I was talking and not paying attention. There we go. So you're gonna work two double crochet, chain two and two double crochet. Now chain two again and work two more double crochet. And that is your double shell. You should have, if you, if you like cover the space where your turning chain is, you should have two chain two spaces and three sections, three groups of two double crochet. Chain three and work your pineapple repeat as usual. So single crochet, chain three, single crochet, chain three, all the way to the end of the pineapple. Ho, ho, ho. Grace is not my middle name. Now we chain three and we're going to work another shell increase. So two double crochet, chain two, two double crochet. Now chain two and work two more double crochet into that shell. Followed by a chain three and then work your pineapple repeat and you're going to repeat this the shell increase in every shell all the way to the end when you do get to the end without chaining work your double crochet into the top of your turning chain so i will be right back and here is a close-up of our pattern repeat there you go that is how everything should be looking so I will be right back. Okay, all done with row nine, our increase row. Now, row 10, you're going to chain three and turn. Work a shell into your first chain two space of your double shell. So one, two, chain two, and then one and two. Now chain three, one, two, three, and into the second chain two space of your double shell, work another shell. Chain three, and work your pineapple stitches as usual. We're gonna reduce these from five loops down to four now. Every row, the loops are gonna get reduced more and more for those who are not familiar with pineapple stitches because it's creating, you know, like a cone or a pineapple. In my opinion though, in my humble opinion, my eye, my little eye spies a pine cone. I've always thought that the pineapple stitches look like pine cones. Please tell me I'm not alone in that. <laughs> See, look, they look like little pine cones. See, they, I get why they call them a pineapple, but to me, it looks like a pine cone. Like you could easily get away with calling that a pine cone. But anyways, so now we have one, two, three, four loops. You're going to chain three, one, two three and then work your double shell exactly the way we did on the first one with your shell in a shell chain three then shell in the next shell over chain three and then into the next chain two space over right here Work your next shell in the shell. 
chain two and two more doubles, followed by a chain three, and then you're just going to repeat your pineapple pattern or pine cone pattern. <laughs> and, and every time you get to the double shell, you're just gonna work that shell, chain three shell all the way to the end. And at the end, you're, without chaining, you're going to work your double crochet into the top of your turning chain. So I will be right back. Pine cone. Okay. <laughs> okay, there we go. Row 10 done. That is how it should look. You should have four, one, two, three, four on your pine, apple, cone. Uh, let's chain three and turn or turn and chain three, however you like to do it. Now we're going to work a shell in the shell. Two more doubles. Oh, not exactly a double, is it? I got ahead of myself. Chain two this time. And into the chain three space, we're gonna do just what we did down here before we worked our seven double crochet. We're gonna work a single crochet, chain three, and single crochet, followed by a chain two, then a shell in the shell. And this is how all of these shell sections will be worked across this row. Then you'll work your pineapple repeat as usual. We're gonna reduce those loops from four to three. So here we go. Now we're going to chain three. We only chain two when we work this little stitch here. So now let's reduce these four loops down to three. Single crochet, chain three, single crochet, chain three, single crochet, chain three, and then we work our shell, chain two, shell, followed by our little nubbin stitch. That's what I'm gonna call it. Pine cones and nubbins, why not? So chain two, work your single crochet, chain three, and single crochet. See, doesn't it look like a little nubbin? Just a little nubbin. I know it's a little loop, but we'll call it a little nubbin for short. Not for short, but for fun. Okay, then work your, well, let me do that one better. I don't like a loose stitch. They just, it drives me crazy. Please tell me I'm not alone in that. Okay. Then reduce your four loops to three, and then work your shell portion all the way to the end, where we will end, as usual, with a double crochet over the top of the turning chain. I'll be right back. Okay, that was row 11, all done. Let's go ahead and jump right into row 12. You're gonna chain three and turn, and this time we're gonna work three shells over all of the shell sections. So you're gonna work a shell. Oh, and they're all going to be separated by chain three this time. So we only do the chain two whenever we are making these little nubbins. <laughs> so it's going to be a shell, chain three, shell, chain three, shell, chain three, and then reduce your pineapple loops from three down to two. So here we go. Shell, chain three and into the little chain three loop or the nubbin as I have been calling it we work a shell chain two two double chain three I've got a yarn mon monster coming after me this thread is really giving me, it's testing my patience today. Okay, followed by our chain three. Now we work a shell and then another chain three. 
Lord, if you would just not do that. Here we go, chain three. And then again, like I said before, we're gonna reduce the three loops down to two. One, two, three, single crochet. One, two, three, single crochet followed by a chain three, and then just repeat the shell section with three shells, one, two, three, all three of them separated by a chain three. Okay, so I will meet you at the end. You're gonna work that all the way to the end where you're gonna end with a double crochet into the top of your turning chain. I will be right back. It's really starting to turn out. Ooh, she's pretty. Here we go, done with row 12. Now we're gonna start on row 13. So let's start with a shell. Of course, you're gonna chain three and turn. Start with a shell into your first shell. And we're gonna, oh, Try that again. Okay, now chain two, because we're gonna work those little nubbins again. Into each chain three space of our shell section, we're gonna work the single crochet, chain three, single crochet, followed by a chain two, and then work a shell and repeat. chain two and work the single crochet, chain three, single crochet, followed by a chain two, <clears throat> and then a shell. chain three and now on a pineapple on the pineapple we're going to reduce our two little loops into just one one two three single crochet chain three again and repeat the shell section that we just did over here so you're going to work a shell chain two work the little nebbin chain two, work a shell, and then repeat, and do that all the way to the end, ending with a double crochet into the top of your turning chain. So that is row 13, I will be right back. Okay, so now let's work row 14. You're gonna chain three and turn, and work a shell in the shell. We're gonna do a little twisting and turning in this row. Okay. Chain three, work a shell into the little chain three nubbin. Chain three and work a shell in the shell. That one was a little loose. Chain three, work a shell in the little chain three that we made before, the little nebbin. <laughs> chain three and work another shell. This thread is trying me today. 
Okay, so now we have one, two, three, four, five shells made. Chain three, work one single crochet into the tip of the pineapple, that last loop right there. Chain three. Now into this next shell, work two double crochet. One and two. Chain one, turn your work and jump over to the last shell we made right here and work a slip stitch. Chain one, turn your work again, yarn over and right here into this shell we were just working in where we put those two double crochet, put two more double crochet to complete the shell. Now chain three and continue to work your shells. One into the little nubbin, then a, a chain three and a shell in the shell and repeat that all the way. When you get to this portion right here, work your last shell, chain three, work a single crochet into the tip of the pineapple. Chain three, work two double crochet plus chain one. Turn your work and slip stitch back into the last shell that you worked into, that you made. Chain one, turn again, and work your last two double crochet into this shell to complete the shell, just like we did right over here. And this is how it should look. And if you need to rewind, you can go ahead and do that, of course. But this will be the repeat all the way to the end of row 14. So I will be right back. I'm going to finish working the rest of this row. So I wanted to jump back on here and show you that one portion again. I know I said you can rewind, but I feel kind of bad. I just want to show it one more time. So we're going to chain three. I just worked my last shell. This is what I just worked. So you're going to chain three, work your single crochet to finish off this pineapple, just like that. Chain three, and work two double crochet into the next shell over. Chain one and turn. Now into the last shell we just made, see that's the last shell we just made, you're going to work your slip stitch, then chain one and turn again, yarn over and complete that shell. There's the two double crochet we worked just before we turned. Now go ahead and complete that shell with two more double crochet, just like that. Be right back. Okay, now for row 15, there we are, row 14 all done. So for row 15, chain three and turn and work a shell into your first shell. And we're gonna chain two and work that little, what I've been calling a nubbin, so a single crochet, chain three, and single crochet all into that chain three space. And that's how we're gonna work them across. So chain two, work your shell. So I'm gonna finish working these next few shells and I will be right back. Of course, after each shell, you're just gonna chain two and work the single crochet, chain three, single crochet. So that's what you need between each of the shells. Okay, I'll be right back. Okay, so finished working my shells. Now, it does not say to chain one at this point. It just says to work a single crochet into the chain space. It again does not say to chain one. It says to work 10 double crochet into the slip stitch. So, from that single crochet, I'm just gonna yarn over 
and right here at the point where we kept doing all those turns and everything I'm gonna work 10 double crochet into this slip stitch I don't know that it's actually the slip stitch but it's the stitch right at the point where everything was joined so just work 10 double crochet in there Got my 10 double crochet into that little stitch and then it says to work a single crochet in the chain space so the chain three space before the next shell that we have and from there just yarn over and work a shell because it does not say to work a chain one again throughout this whole section right here it doesn't say to work any chain ones Okay. Okay, so let's let's do all of that again. So we're going to chain 2, work the single crochet, chain 3, and single crochet all into that chain 3 space between the shells. Chain 2 and work a shell. And repeat chain two and into the chain three space work the single chain three single okay and then when you work your last shell just like we did before without chaining work a single crochet into this chain three space then again without chaining work 10 double crochet into the slip stitch or just try to work as centered as you can into this stitch somehow <laughs> Like, let's see, I think I can get my, yeah. So like right there, as centered as you can, you know, like here's the pineapple. And then just as, as centered as you can get it there at the top. And then without chaining, work your single crochet into the chain three space and then come on back. I'll meet back up with you when we get to that point. Or I might just come back and work the 10 single double crochet. Sorry, work the 10 double crochet with you again. Okay, just worked my last shell of this section so now without chaining i'm going to work a single crochet into that chain three space and again without chaining i'm going to work yarn over and work 10 double crochet into all the way at the top here above that pineapple And then, so work the rest of your 10 double crochet and then without chaining work a single crochet into that chain three space right there okay got my single crochet worked in now we're going to work one shell so i did not chain first i just went straight from the single crochet into work in the shell work the shell into the shell Now, here we are, we are reaching the point of the fan. So without chaining, work your single crochet, yarn over twice and into the shell, work 10 treble crochet. Yep, that was a double. So we're gonna work 10 treble crochet right here into the top of this shell. And then you're just gonna mirror everything we just did on this side down the other side. So when you're done working your 10 trebles, without chaining, you're gonna work your single, then work a shell. And again, without training, training, chaining, work your single, then right here at the 
top of this pineapple into that little stitch there, work your 10 double and carry on the rest of the way exactly as we did here. And if you need a reminder, just look over at the work you already did and that will help guide you through the work that you need to do. We're just basically mirroring everything we just did. So work your 10 trebles and then just mirror everything on this side and with a double crochet into the top of the double, but don't turn. We're not gonna turn after this row. I'll be right back. Okay, here we go. I'll show you how it looks. We got the, looks like the backside facing us. Yeah, well, I mean, that's, that's where my tail is. So yeah, this looks like the backside here, but this is turning out so pretty, isn't it? And I know it's kind of like peacocking down, but whenever we block it, we'll be able to manipulate all the stitches, open everything up like that and really splayed out the way it's supposed to be. So let's move on now. We're not gonna turn. We're gonna work along the bottom edge of this side of the fan now. So chain one, and starting right here in this first section, we've got 12 rows to work down, counting the very first one that our hook is attached to. That's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, 9, 10, 11, and 12, okay? So what we're gonna do is we have our chain one and we're just gonna work three single crochet into every row along the edge. One, two, and three. Next row down, which is this hollow space right here, Put three stitches one two three and I mean three single crochet one two and three so keep doing this until you have worked your last three stitches in this last hollow space down here I'll be right back okay there we go we worked in all 12 of those spaces our single crochets now into this little chain three space down here that we worked. We left these four shells unworked. So into that little chain, chain three space, work a single crochet. Now chain three and into the shell, work a single crochet, chain three and into the little chain three loop, work a single and then repeat again into the shell, work a single. Now chain three and into this little uh, chain three loop here, yarn over twice and work one treble crochet or double treble if you're in the UK. Work a treble crochet plus chain three and then another treble into the same little loop. Chain three and repeat everything we just did. So work in your single crochet into the shell, chain three into the little chain three space or loop, chain three into the shell. Oh. Chain three. I need to get a better position because I am tired of slipping my stitches like that. Okay, and now without chaining, we start working our three double, forgive me, our three single crochet in the side edge just like we did before. Two, three, one, two. Do that one again two, and three. So just work those all the way up to the end there. And there at the side of our last shell, work three and then come on back. All done. This is how everything should be looking now. There we go. I think we're gonna work the handle out of this section here. I mean, I think obviously we're gonna work the handle out of that section there. <laughs> okay, now let's see what we do next. Okay, now we are going to chain three, one, two, three in the first shell, 
we work our single crochet, chain three, single crochet, chain three, and into the little nubbin, <laughs> we work a single crochet, chain three, single crochet, move all that to the side, chain five, single crochet, chain three, and single crochet, all into the same little chain three loop there, creating sort of a clover, like that. Chain three, and we work the single crochet, chain three, single crochet again into the shell. So this is gonna be the repeat for the, for the rest of these shells here. When you work your last shell, of course we're not working a shell in the shell, we're working the little, the little nubbins as I've been calling them into the shell, just like that. And then into the little chain three loops, you work the little clover where you work your one chain three loop, then a chain five loop, then a chain three loop. Okay, so when you get your last little chain, chain three loop worked into this shell, I'm sorry, into this shell, come on back. And we will work this section here. Okay, now we're gonna, there we go, let me show you what we have here so far. There you go. Now we're going to chain three and into our first double crochet, work a single crochet, chain three, into the next double crochet, work a single, chain three, into the next, repeat. We're looking for four loops. There's two. One, two, three, into the next double. There's three. One, two, three. One more time. Now we're gonna chain five. One, two, three, four, five. Single crochet into the next double. And then repeat everything we just did for the rest of the fan. One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. There we go. And then chain three and repeat everything we just did. And this is gonna be the repeat all the way across. All of your large fans are gonna look like this right here. You're gonna have four loops, then a, then a uh, four of the chain three loops, then one of the chain five, then four of the chain three. And all of your shells should look like this. You know, you have your chain three loop in a shell and then in the little chain three loop next to it your little clover so repeat this all the way to the end but this is the this is the pattern repeat now and this will complete the top of our fan and then we can start on the handle okay and I'll show you how that looks so you can see this is what we are now working on all the way. Then we start on this part. There you go. Okay. I will be right back. Okay, here we are. Isn't that pretty? Oh, this is gonna look so pretty once it's pinned. Oh, yes, yes, yes. Okay, now we're gonna end with a chain three. There's my last little nubbin that I worked chain three and then a slip stitch 
down into the oh, little doggy here into the first single crochet on the side go now let's see what we do next I think we're gonna do a little more down here let's see yeah we're gonna do a little more down here okay so let's move on oh there's my mouse isn't that cute I got a new mouse <laughs> okay so let's move on so now in the same stitch we just slip stitched into I need to undo this and see which one I'm in okay I'm in that one so in the same stitch we just slip stitched into work a single crochet chain three skip two stitches one two and in the third single crochet over work a single crochet chain three and single crochet back into that same stitch to create that little nubbin. Let me know in the comments if you guys are sick of me saying nubbin. <laughs> Chain three, one, two, three, and repeat. Skip two stitches. In the third one over, work the single crochet, chain three, single crochet, all into the same stitch. Chain three, and repeat skip two stitches and work the I don't know what else to call it because I don't want to it's a mouthful to say single crochet chain three single crochet I want to call it a nubbin I don't I guess I mean pico if you want to call it a little pico I did a little nubbin sorry if I'm being annoying I really really am <laughs> there we go and this is going to be the repeat all the way to the end so come on back when you get to the end and we will work up whatever they're going to have us do next. I don't know yet. I haven't read that far ahead. I'll be right back. Okay, so I just worked my last little chain three deal there, a little nubbin as you will. So skipping the last two stitches, I only have two stitches left to skip. It says in the pattern to skip the last three, but I don't think it's going to make that big of a difference. Okay, we're going to chain three and work three single crochet into this chain three space down here on the round portion. So that is one, two, and three. Now we're gonna chain three again. One, two, and three, and work the three single crochet into the next chain three space over two and three chain three and repeat one two three chain three and into this next chain three space one two and three now we're going to chain three and work one single crochet into this chain three space. This is where we worked our trebles, so it's right at the point. And then chain 50 for our handle. Two, three, four, five. I'll be right back when I have 50. Actually, if you want to make life easy on yourself, because the instructions are going to tell us to uh, work a single crochet into the 30th stitch down from our 50th, right? So once you have worked 20 stitches, mark it with a stitch marker. That way you don't have to count 30 stitches down. It's already marked. So that is my 20th stitch right there. 23, 24, 25. So just keep on going to 50. Okay, so I now have my 50 chains and my 20th chain, my my 30 chains down is already marked. It's the 20th chain up. Sorry. So I'm going to work in the back bump, which my stitch marker is not in at all. So that'll be easy. So in there we go. Okay. Now we are going to chain 10. One, two. Three, four, five, six, seven, 
eight, nine, and 10. Okay, so we have our 10 chains. We're going to skip 11 and work a single crochet into the 12th chain down. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, and that one is twelve. Work a single crochet. Now we're going to chain nine. One, two, three, four, just a moment. Five, six, seven, eight, and nine. Okay. <laughs> And then it says to skip nine and then work a slip stitch, or I'm sorry, I mean a single crochet back into this chain space here. There we go. Just gonna repeat everything we did on this side. So now we're gonna chain three. And into the next chain space over, work our three single crochet. One, two, and three, chain three, and work your three single crochet. So let's work this all the way down to the end. Two, three, chain three, one, two, and three, chain three, and then one, two, and three, chain three, skip two, and in the third single crochet over, work your little nebbin, one, two, three, back into the same stitch, work your single crochet, chain three, one, two, three, Skip two, one, two, and work your little nubbin. And that's the repeat all the way to the end. So come on back when you get to the end. Okay, so I ended with, there's my last little nubbin there. I ended with a chain three and a single crochet on the end. And then it says to fasten off. Of course, I'm going to leave a very long tail for weaving in. So here we are so far. Oh yes, let's look at this handle. Okay, so I think all we really have left to do besides the little flowers, which I have already made the flowers, but I'm gonna show you because the, the thread is so fine, I'm gonna show you how to make the flowers with the sport weight yarn, but I did already make all of the little flowers and what I wound up using was the number 20 thread. I know it calls for number 30. I went with number 20. I, I think number 30 would have been too small because look at this. That's with number 20. So I used the number 20 thread and a number four 1.25 millimeter hook. But yeah, so I'm gonna show you how to make the flowers with sport yarn so you can see what I'm doing much easier than with this thinner stuff. Okay, so let me just read this pattern a bit and see what we need to do for the handle portion. Oh, it's so pretty, so pretty. Okay, so with the, with the right side of the work facing you, so wherever your starting tail is sticking out of, put that to the back and you want this clean surface facing you, the right side facing you. And we have this chain three space right here just before the handle. So join your thread into that chain three space Okay, then chain one and work a single crochet. Actually, we're gonna work a total of three single crochet all into that chain three space. That's two and three. Now we're gonna work 15 double crochet into this chain space and then we're gonna work a slip stitch into the single crochet right there. So we have our three single crochet and let's work our 15 double crochet. Here we go. 
one, two, three. I'll be right back whenever I have 15 double crochet packed into here. Okay, now into this single crochet, we work a slip stitch. Yarn over and work 15 more into this next chain space. And then work a slip stitch into this single crochet on the end. So I will be right back. Okay, there is my second set of 15 double crochet. And now I'm going to work a slip stitch into the top of this single crochet. Now we're going to work 46 double crochet around the bottom of the handle and slip stitch into the single crochet on the other side. So here we go. Oops. <laughs> All right, 46 double crochet. I will be right back. Okay, so I found that 46 was not enough. Um, so I wound up working 56 double crochet onto the lower portion here, and it still kind of has some spacing. And, and that's going to go for these as well. If you feel like 15 isn't enough, then work 17 or 20, whatever it takes. But I did not feel like 50, 46 was enough. Um, yeah, it still doesn't seem like even 56 is enough. I'm trying to kind of spread them out just a little bit. to kind of eliminate some of the gapping, but you see that gapping? Oh, I hate that, it's just awful. I think I might add, you know, I'm just gonna add probably another, see if I go up to 60. So 56, 57, 58, 59. I think 60 is gonna do it for me and then 60, yeah. So there you go. And I think that looks a lot better. Okay, now I'm gonna work my slip stitch into the top of the single crochet. Yarn over and work my 15 doubles plus slip stitch, and then 15 doubles. Then we're gonna work three single crochet into the chain three space right there. Then you can, that's it, then you're done. Then we, I will show you how to make the flowers. So I will be right back. Okay, got my 15 in. So now I'm just going to Work my three single crochet into this chain three space on the side. And what I'm gonna decide to do here is slip stitch into this single crochet right here. And that's where I'm gonna end it. Nice long tail. I'm gonna go ahead and weave in all of my tails. And when I come back, we will make the flower. The flower is very, very, very super easy. So yeah, I look forward to starching this up, pinning it down, and oh, it's going to be so pretty. And I honestly don't mind that it actually has a little bit of a curve on the sides. I may not stress that too much, I don't because I don't want to bunch the detail up at the top too much. There we go. Okay, I'll be right back. I'm going to weave in all of these tails. Okay, so for the flower, it says to chain five and then join into the first stitch, first chain of your chain five to form a ring. I will be working with a magic circle. So we're gonna start off with a chain four, yarn over twice for a treble, a US treble crochet. And we're going to work a treble cluster. So pull through two, 
and pull through two, stop. Now you have two loops on the hook, yarn over twice, go back into the ring, pull through two, pull through two, and stop. And that's all you should have is three stitches worked. Pull through all three, then chain four, come back down into the ring, and work a slip stitch to secure it all into place. Then chain four and make another one. We want a total of six petals. Three, four, yarn over twice, pull through two, pull through two, and stop. Yarn over twice and repeat. One and two. Then yarn over and pull through all three. Chain four. Come back down into the ring and work a slip stitch. There we go. Chain four, one, two, three, four. So you can see that your chain fours on both sides are adding to the petals. Let me tighten up my ring a little bit. Yarn over twice and work a treble crochet cluster. There we go. One, two, three, four chains. Come back down into the ring and work a slip stitch. I'll show you one more time. One, two, three, four. There we go. Yarn over twice, pull through two, pull through two, and stop. Yarn over twice, pull through two, pull through two, and stop. Pull through all three loops, then chain four, and then work a slip stitch. Again, just do this until you have a total of six petals and that's it that's the whole flower then you can tighten up your ring and move on to the next one you need four flowers total so here is the placement of the flowers one in the center here then you've got these like fan stitches up here and you're going to put one onto each fan stitch and then down here at the bottom the well just right there I mean I guess I don't need to verbally describe it right there <laughs> so I'm going to go ahead and believe it or not, I'm going to sew these on. I left super long tails on each flower so I can actually sew these on. But to your disappointment, I'm sure some of you, I'm going to hot glue my pearls on only because the little hole, my needles, even my smallest needle can't get through the little hole of the pearl. So I'm going to go ahead and hot glue those on, but I'm going to do that after I starch and pin this. So that will be last. That way the pearls don't get the that starchy stuff on it. So, okay. I'm going to go ahead and sew my flowers on. And then when I come back, I am going to pin this. So I'm going to go with a, I say starch, right? It's I'm going to go budget here because, well, I like to operate on a budget because I feel like most people have to operate on a budget. I have to operate on a budget with the exception of that Angora yarn. But, you know, I saved up for like four months for that stuff. So I'm, I was looking up some ways. I don't have any kind of starch. I don't have any fabric stiffener, nothing, no branded names. I'm well aware that they exist. I know where to buy them. I know what they're called. I've watched a dozen videos on how to use them. I'm well aware of all of that. But I'm going to do the... Elmer's glue method because I have Elmer's glue. So that's the one, that's the method I'm going to go with. So please don't beat me up in the comments for making my own personal choices. Thank you very much. And I think some people might appreciate that there is a more budget friendly option, something that you may already have in the house to do this with so you don't have to run out and buy something extra. So I'm going to sew these flowers on and be right back. Okay, now I'm going to, okay, everything is on there. My <laughs> terrible sewing job don't you judge me okay now let's go ahead look how pretty oh this is gonna look so pretty okay school glue with the schooled glue it's a one-to-one -one ratio so 50 50 so put a bunch of glue there we 
I'm literally not measuring it out. Okay. Then I just have some water here. And I don't even know if this is enough. I'm just gonna mix it all up. Okay, so that's about as good as I can get it mixed up and that's okay. Now we just put the fan in and let it soak. Just giving it gentle little squeezes so that it gets through all the fibers. And then that's it. Oh, it looks like a hot mess, doesn't it? It will dry clear. Okay, let me go get my cardboard box because that's what I, I don't have any blocking boards. I have cardboard boxes. Okay, and forgive the lighting. I've got my ceiling fan. Two out of four lights are burnt out. So the lighting is all on that side. So I don't have any cling film. So I'm just going to use some Ziploc bags so that the glue doesn't stick to the cardboard. And there we go. And I may have to do this sideways for the fan tail. Oh, I may have to cut one of these bags open. I'm not sure. Yeah, I think that will work. That will work. Okay, and I've got some T-pins here. And I'm just going to start down here with the handle and I'm just going to put one in just to place it, just to hold it. And then one up here at the top. right into this little loop. There we go. I'll put one in off to the side. Of course, working in those outer loops. And then one off to this side. Here we go. And I'm not straight. So now I'm just going to spend a fair bit of time just shaping and stretching and pinning. This is going to take a little while. So I will be back when everything is all done. and it is all ready to go. There, what do we think so far? Okay, so I will be back whenever, it's probably tomorrow, tomorrow evening or whenever, whenever it's all dry and everything, but it's going to require quite a bit of pinning. So I will see you guys then. Okay, I know it's super dark over here, but just, I'm all pinned in, and I still have quite a bit of this left over, and it has dissolved quite a bit more. So I'm what I'm gonna do is just paint a little more on there just for some extra, and I'm just doing a light, light layer, but this, this will be sitting overnight. And I didn't see this in a video. I did see people painting on fabric stiffeners, but those were ones that were meant to be painted on. 
This, I don't know if this is a good idea or not, so we will find out tomorrow. I just wanted to add a little extra. And I feel like my pineapples right here aren't quite open enough. What do you think? I think, no, I'm crazy. They are. They're fine. <laughs> Sounds funny. I just wanted to put a little extra. I really don't know if this is a good idea. So let me be your canary in the coal mine on this one. Sorry, I'm really bad. I'm, I'm more just watching what I'm doing than filming. Terrible. Okay, I think that's going to be good enough. I'm going to get these tips right here. But I just wanted to show you what I was doing as my little, like, finishing touch here. Bit, a little bit too much on this side, I think. Kind of knock that down a little bit. Okay. Well, we'll see if I just made the dumbest mistake and it was fine before. <laughs> there it is. Let me get out of the light. So you can see it's really pretty. I love it with the white flowers. Okay, guys, I'll see you tomorrow. Okay, so it's been about 24 hours. It's nighttime again, so that's why it looks like this. But here is how the glue and water held up. It's really, really pretty. I love it. It's, it's not the super stiffest thing in the world, but it works. You know, I kind of want to put it on the wall. All I have is a thumbtack right now, but just, just out of sheer curiosity, I want to put it on the wall. So come on, let's go put it there. So there it is. It's just being held up with a little thumbtack for now. So just, just mostly for the video, but I have it up above the plant here next to the TV. There's the hallway. I think it's so pretty. And there it is. Oh, it's so pretty. With the little pearls, I did glue those on. So what do you guys think uh oh it's blurry oh so what do you guys think of course you can find the pattern for this in the link in the description box down below but isn't it beautiful there's the back of it and my <laughs> super awesome sewing job again don't you judge me <laughs> anyways i love it i think that the water and glue worked out really really good if you're just looking for something to stiffen up your doilies it doesn't have to be like super stiff but honestly this is like stiff collar stiff it really really worked so there you go i will see you guys in the next video bye